Can you explain, Anna, who's, uh, whose van this is? This is Tim Jim's van. He's the mayor of the Avant Yard. That's all. Yeah, he's dangerous. He's got a dangerous van. Wait, can you flip through some more of those? Okay. Tim Jim. This was a good one. Dangerous one, what? I saw that. I love that sign. Where is he gone? Come show me his van. And Cribs. Tell me more edition. about yeah. Tell me more about Tim Jim. He's an alien, I think. Is he in here? He believes in um, Tim Jim. He believes yeah. that the moon you, is a satellite, which is pretty weird. The moon is a satellite. Uh, I, I mean, you know, the moon's made of cheese. Let's be clear. It's He's a, also a bear cat, but the cat is silent. Yeah, the bear is kind of growly. The cat, is, the sea and cat is silent. It's yeah. like a bear at. Um, he thinks that sometimes it rains charcuterie board. Uh, Mostly cheese, though. Every single Friday in this van, rains charcuterie board. <laughs> yeah, and sometimes on Sunday, charcuterie makeup day. Yeah. And you live in this van full time? Or do you live in this van full time? How is it? Uh, I My intention when I got the van was to stop riding on the currents of everyone else's lives and just start sailing in the directions that I wanted to go. So it's a. Uh, so how's it working out for you? Uh, pretty good. When the storms come up, I do seek portage, um, and when the sailing is smooth, I go for miles. Tell us a poem. Uh, yes, please. One of your poem. own. Uh, well, actually, I, I have a few of my own memorized, but in honor of the conversation we had this morning, I'll do, uh, uh, John Don's For Whom the Bell Tolls. Uh, no, I want to hear one, is it, I want to hear one of your poems. One of my poems? Yes. Please. Okay. Oh, I haven't. Can I, I, can hear... I cheat? Can I use my phone? <laughs> yes. Right. Okay. I did want to hear that one, though. The bell one. For whom the bell tolls? Yeah. No man is an island entire of his own. <clears throat> Each is a piece of the continent, a part of the main. If a clod be washed away by the sea, Europe is the less, as well as if a promontory were, as well as if a manner of thine own or thine own, friend, thine own friends were. Each man's death diminishes me, for I am involved in mankind. Therefore, seek not to know for whom the bell tolls. It tolls for thee. Bravo. Yeah. John Don. Where are we, Anna? We're in Bombay Beach. Bombay Beach. <laughs> Bombay Beach. And what's bitch. happening in Bombay Beach? Um, we're just hanging out, being weird. What's happening, like, conceptually and overall in this town? It's a movement of radical thinkers and doers and crazy weirdos that... I'd known that I never would have come. <laughs> it's way too weird. And what's happened? Can you tell me just like in a nutshell? Um, this is in view of our podcast mm -hmm. that we'll do, or kind of a coming attraction for it. Mm -hmm. What did you do at Arco Santi? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I was the director of community engagement. Yeah. And 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 coming to Bombay Beach from Arco Santi, are there some initial reactions that you would care to share in terms of uh, um, just kind of? You said earlier something about the kind of learning from mistakes mm -hmm. that were made. Is that is that too big of a thing to unpack in a brief little interaction like this? I think I think it is, but I will say, um, you know, Arcosanti, regardless of its original conception, its original reason for existing, now serves what I think of as an entirely different function, which is it's a no on the webway of a larger global conversation about how to do things differently. And I think places like Arcosani, places like Bombay Beach. Well, I'll take that. Hello, good morning. Hey, good morning. Orange grapefruit. We're orange having an impromptu philosophical conversation about community. Yeah, in the van, yeah. of all places. What's the Go uh, on. Uh, Arcosani is a no on the web webway of a larger global conversation that's happening. And I think as people continue to decentralize these ideas, take them out, experiment, uh, practice with them, learn lessons, because there's the theory of community, and then there's the reality of sitting in the hot sun in April when the flies are out and the, you know, the beach smells awful. Um, I think that the important thing is going to be finding a, a way to continue passing on what's been learned in spaces like Bombay Beach uh, for other people to learn from and to iterate this isn't the answer and it's not going to be because there isn't an answer um, to any of the questions we're asking there's just the constant practice of being in a community space together but there are lessons that will be learned here that will help another place not have to ask those questions that you answered here 
Or at least ask them in a slightly different way. And in a slightly different context. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. But you believe in progress overall? Oh, 100%. We were talking about the day, that today. I am pessimistic in the short run on humanity, but bullish in the long run. <laughs> I, think, I think in the short run, we're going to keep fucking a lot of stuff up. But I think yeah. in the long run, we're going to become an interplanetary species. And we will land on the moon and discover it's made of cheese. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're ready for your poem. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um... I know. I like to put people on the spot. Yeah, you do. Oh. Doing great, Tim. Thanks. There's that saying. Uh, some. Well, it doesn't matter. No, because sometimes I like. I, I, I want to do a podcast with them, but there's no time. So like, we might as well just like have a brief conversation. Sure, <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be coming back. Sure. All right. <laughs> okay. There's that one. Sorry. While he pulls up the poem, we can meet Cody, the roadie, and his beautiful Prevo bus. This has become a little bus depot. A depot of... we got Jeff Frost's bus there. We've got Hannah's bus. <laughs> I haven't read this one in a long time. Um, We're getting the poem. Intention. Intention. We are made of the stuff of stars. We are the nutrients and the minerals of the earth. Water molecules catching a ride across the continents embodied in bodies. The breath in our lungs is as the wind in the sails of a ship carrying us ever forward as we zip along the surface of the seas under the watchful gaze of the heavens. Our cells, our atoms, our very DNA, all aching to return, to submerge, merge our substance back into the cosmic soup from whence it came and to whence it will return. We are the stuff that dreams are made of, a universal kind of dream, no longer or shorter than the time it takes for a single grain of sand to dislodge itself, careening through space in the pitched center of an infinite hourglass, only to land again amongst the grains that came before, and that, when the, gra when the glass is inevitably turned again by the hand of something Call it God, call it Allah, call it Yahweh or Great Spirit, physics or fizzle sticks, will once again have their turn on the mystical merry-go-round. We are souls surfing, catching this human wave, which will soon break on this shore, our earthly abode, but man, what a ride. So hang 10, hang 11, hang whatever you can, or might, or feel, or dare. Dreams that we are decorate this time with music, with art, with love, love, love. Be still or be loud, climb your mountain, write your book, dance and sing or sit and be observer to the sound of the wind in the trees, the taste of the sun on your skin. This above all, be. Your soul knows how to ride this way. Who are you to deny it? A cosmic ride. Beautiful. Um, okay, one more question. <laughs> um, you said if you, if you don't mind sharing this publicly, um, that you think that the principles of Burning Man mm -hmm. were a wrong turn. Mm -hmm. um, and can you explain that? Yeah. Because um, we're grappling with principles here, with mm -hmm. hierarchies versus non-hierarchies, mm -hmm. systems of care in which, ca in which we don't uh, impose mm -hmm. too much. You know, grappling with decommodification while at the same time living in a society, yeah, it's very like steeped in capitalism, which mm -hmm. like rears its head in the way people play with real estate here, and the the reality of the inequality of certain people who have arrived versus people who were here, mm -hmm. and so I just wanted to see hear your mm -hmm. your take on working on, you know, with it's having come from a place that was very highly structured. Mm -hmm and the kind of pros and cons of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, well, actually, I want to compliment you, Tao, because last night when you asked, I thought your question was really interesting when you asked how, how to get the community here more involved and how to, you know, generally communicate better with people. Um, this was on Mars College, which is the, 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 the amazing encampment that's grown outside of Bombay Beach. And I get, 
I get the sense that you don't, you're not just talking about the, um, the people who are buying property, the artists here, talk about the local community yes. as well, because I think it's really important to you. Yeah. And, um, you know, one of the things, it's funny, I heard a few of the people out there say, well, what about like, uh, discord, discord. Yeah. and the, like, uh, my, my dear friend, Dewey Nelson, who's a Hopi, uh, artist, uh, he once said to me, when you, the problem with white people coming into native spaces is that they're often coming in saying, Hey, here's how you're doing it wrong. Uh, the, f you know, we want to build you solar. We want to build you off grid X, Y, and Z. And, uh, he said, if you don't, if you don't walk into a, an indigenous space and the first question on your lips isn't, uh, what do you need help with? Then you're going to be dismissed, you know, from the beginning because, yeah indigenous people are so used to people coming into their spaces and saying to them, Hey, this is what you need rather than what do you need? Right. And if that indigenous person turns around you and says, I need, you know, two double cheeseburgers and a large French fry, like you better also bring a Coke, you know, like yeah. that's your buy-in in that community space right. is showing them that you're willing to speak their language and meet their needs. Um, so in terms of the way that people, you know, the lessons learned from Marcus or lessons learned at Burning Man. Um, and, you know, what you all are grappling with here. I, I think one of my takeaways from traveling and seeing different places is that there are models that do work out there, um, but they have to be held with a certain like level of intentionality and reverence. The reason we default to things like an LLC or default to things like a nonprofit, which is what both Arcosani and Burning Man are, is because they're the easiest models to default to because all the infrastructure is out there to to build that model the lawyers know how to build the contracts you know the board mm -hmm. designs are finished for us um and so yeah in terms of uh and you think the problem with those is that they're too top down no i think they work really i think we get stuck in the idea that there's one model we're all looking for uh -huh. but the answer is that models are contextual to what you're trying to accomplish and organizational structures are contextual to what you're trying to accomplish. So if you're looking for, a, you know, if you have one type of organization, then a benevolent dictatorship, you know, a la what's happening at Mars, I suspect based on what I've seen out there, is the right model because it's accomplishing what you're trying to accomplish. So the first question any organization needs to ask is, what are we trying, what are we envisioning we're trying to accomplish here? And then select the organizational model that's going to work for that. The problem that both I think Arcosani and Burning Man in terms of their model, their organization model versus the uh, reality of the communities that live there is that the models were chosen on a whim. Arcosani became a 501c3 because Paulo Soleri thought it sound, a nonprofit sounded better than a for-profit. And in all fairness, there weren't a lot of options for someone in the 1950s doing what he was trying to do. Burning Man became a 501c3 because they needed a way to legitimately communicate with the BLM um, as an entity, you know, not as a, you know, they needed something to rent this space under and have the liability covered. And, um, yeah. So, you know, I think that you guys are at a really great, uh, point right now because you're at a point where you could choose a model. If you like had options laid out in front of you, you might be able to choose a different model than the models that everyone else is working with, but you need to know what your options are, um, before you can do that. Otherwise, it will default to whatever the de facto model is. And that model will do what it does in every other space that it exists in, which, which is, is what? perpetuate inequity. Um, because once you, you know, land on a, uh, a model for doing something, um, you know, we build, we build these systems that we turn around and we say, oh, the system is, you know, it is, it's the system. But we built the system in the first place, you know. And yeah. it's, a pretty rare, it's pretty rare that you have an opportunity to start from the ground up and work from there rather than trying to like go back and fix the mistakes that came before because of a decision that was made about a system. So your issues with the principles of Burning Man is that they came from the top down though, you said. Yeah. Instead yeah. of from the bottom up. Yeah, Ch uh, and Chicken John Rinaldi, who writes a lot about that, uh, thinks that, you know, basically that was the moment that Burning Man ceased to be a really interesting experiment in community and started becoming just a event, um, you know. Yeah. Um, it had the potential, the potentiality of a really interesting community experiment. Um, but when push came to shove, the decision was made that no, this is how this thing runs. And you either opt into the thing we've decided it is, or you go do something else, you know, get your own, uh, like Paulo Solari used to say, get your own Dan Mesa, 
you know, Burning Man's attitude is like, get your own playa. Um, so yeah, and, and I think what's interesting though is that in the same way, like in a relationship, when you choose something that doesn't work for the person you're in a relationship with, they will then counter choose something else, right? There's large groups of people who've now opted out of Burning Man or opted out of, and Burning Man's just one example of many different examples of, you know, organizational cultures that don't work for people um, and into something else or into trying something else. So by virtue of saying this is what we're doing, I think it both killed the potentiality of Burning Man to be an interesting community experiment, but probably at the same time struck the spark of a fire that in a weird way has done what Burning Man claims its organizational mission is, which is to spread burner culture around the world. They've done it by making that event so exclusive and so difficult to access for a lot of people and so disappointing to a lot of people who go there expecting it to be some kind of radical utopian space right that those people have now moved out of it and into doing other more interesting things so i don't know maybe that was the plan all along uh, maybe maybe larry harvey's actually much smarter than uh, anyone <laughs> really can. meta what do you think i love it <clears throat> you agree I don't like to be put on the spot. Yes, I agree. <laughs> okay, thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Well, this is the beginning I, of a conversation. I want to hear about Utah. I like. We'll have a conversation where we're both around. on camera.